Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20 reads, For you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are yours, which are God's. You can be seated. Keep that in mind, that scripture in mind. Father God, I want to thank you this morning for bringing us out here safe. Thank you for keeping us safe during this extreme weather. We know you are the one that's in control of it all. This morning, we ask you to open our eyes, our ears, and our understanding, and let your word be brought forth in the manner that you want it to be brought. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. We are a part of two realms, the natural and the spiritual. We are spiritual beings in a physical body. Both are intertwined and have effects on one another. Things in the natural can affect things in the spirit and vice versa, amen? If you can speak in the spiritual tongue, that means you can hear a spiritual language. That means you're able to see with the spiritual eye. Amen? That's if God opens your eyes, your ears, and your understanding. An example of this is in 2 Kings chapter 6. Verses 17 and 18, y'all know the story. When Elisha prayed for his servant, for his eyes to be opened. That means there are things all around us that we can't see, that we can't hear, that we don't understand unless the Lord opens your eyes, your ears, and your understanding. Amen? So that means... Things in the spirit are happening around us that we can't see. Amen? God is a spirit. His angels are spirits. That means the fallen angels are spirits too. They operate on a system like ours because that's where we got our systems from. So everything we do is a picture from what they did. They do in the spiritual realm. Amen. When Adam fell, he put us in debt with the devil and separated us from God. That means there's a bill we owe. We're all slaves to this world or to the devil. Amen. That means we got to be redeemed. And lucky for us, we have a redeemer. Couple questions. Have you ever asked yourself, why is sacrifice so important? Why is it that when people sell their souls, they are instructed to sacrifice a family member or someone they love? Why when they say they found a place where the Satanists have been worshiping or performing rituals, why is it they say they found blood there? Why is it when they find some of these ancient ruins and these um, ancient things that they found a lot of bodies and they say, oh, there were human sacrifices going on here. Have you ever asked yourself why? Why in so many rituals that these witch doctors and witches perform, I don't know how many here in America have these practices, but overseas they practice these things a lot. They go to a witch doctor some and they have to be cut. Blood has to be presented, or animals' blood is presented. Have y'all heard about that before? Why is sacrifice so important? 
This morning I'm going to talk about the spiritual currency, which is blood. Blood is the spiritual currency. The scripture says life is in the blood. When man fell, he activated a spiritual currency. They used to build altars and offer sacrifices to God. Every year they would have to sacrifice something for the forgiveness of sins. They used to bring spotless animals to be sacrificed to God. Bulls, goats, doves, and many other animals to pay for sins. Because blood is the spiritual currency. Hebrews 10.4, Hebrews 10.4 states, It's not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. God thought so much of you, he created the most powerful currency in the physical and spiritual world to buy you back from the devil. Tell your neighbor, I've been redeemed. Once again, I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 6, 20 says, For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. This verse is talking about the natural and the spiritual. You were bought at a price. And that currency used to purchase you was blood. When you buy something, there has to be some kind of exchange. Right? You go buy something, you give them money. So that means blood was used to buy you back. Different bloods have different values. The blood you were purchased with is worth more than any other blood in the universe. God thought so much of you, he created a special currency to redeem you back to him. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19 says, You are not redeemed by corruptible things like silver and gold, but by the precious blood of Jesus. You can have fake silver. You can have fake gold. You can have 10 karat gold. Or you can have 24 karat gold. Those things are corruptible. If you don't know, that's a lot of dudes when I was coming up, they'll see a young guy like me and they'll try to sell us a chain or something in the parking lot. We have no experience in gold. He'll set it on fire. Show you, oh, this is real. This is real. We have no experience. I'm going to give you a good deal. Give me $20. And we thinking, oh, we done got us a nice good chain for $20. Only to find out it's not gold at all. He'll even show you on the class where it say 14 k on there. See, it's real corruptible things. But luckily for us, there's only one real Jesus. Before we get into that, let's talk about what blood does. Say, what blood does? Blood speaks. Have you ever heard the phrase, money talks and something else walks? Y'all done heard that before, right? Blood, the currency we were bought with, talks. And I'm going to prove it to you. In Genesis chapter 4, verses 8 to 10, Genesis chapter 4, verses 8 to 10 reads, Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Abel's blood cried out to God to put blame on his brother for what he had done. Abel's blood screamed justice. We're supposed to love one another and be happy for one another 
But Cain was jealous of his brother, even though it was Cain's own fault that he didn't offer God a good offering. But he still blamed his brother. Jealousy and envy will have you blaming others for your condition. We look at other people and see them being blessed, and we get jealous. But we don't even know what they have sacrificed to get what they got. We give God our leftovers, and then we get jealous. We see somebody with a new car, a new house. And then we get to pointing the fingers, talking about everything they don't do. Instead of looking in the mirror, talking about what we don't do. Jealousy and envy on what others are doing. You don't know the condition of the next person's heart. They're giving God their best while we giving the leftovers and get jealous. God is blessing others. Tell your neighbor, your sacrifice is important. Abel's blood cried out to God for justice because blood has a voice. Say, blood has a voice. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 24 and 25, Hebrews 12, 24 and 25 reads, To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of the sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Jesus' blood cried out a different message than Abel's. Abel's blood cried out revenge, vengeance, blame. Jesus' blood cried out, forgive them and put the blame on me. He took our transgressions. Jesus' blood cried out, don't blame them, blame me. Forgive them for they know not what they do. He loved you enough for you not to get the punishment you deserve. You see the difference between man and God. Man blames, Jesus forgave. Say, Jesus forgave me. Isaiah 53, verse 5, Isaiah 53, 5 reads, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. 1 John 3, 5, 1 John 3, 5 reads, And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Jesus' blood cried out a better message than Abel's. Tell your neighbor, the blood speaks for us. Isn't it nice that we have someone that loved us so much? See, they thought they was killing them. They thought the power was in their hand. But they didn't understand. He said, I lay my life down. It's the difference. He laid his life down for you and for me. Amen? The blood speaks, but also the blood saves. The Old Testament was a shadow of what was to come. Everything in the Old Testament pointed to Jesus coming. It was the example of what he would do. Say, the blood saves. Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. Exodus 12, 13 reads, Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the house's where you are. And when I see blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Looking at this passage, it says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. 
The question is, does he see the blood on you? In Exodus, they had to rub the lamb's blood on the front of their houses, which what? Escaped them from death. I told you what happened in the Old Testament will point to what happened when Jesus come. The death angel will pass over you if he sees the blood. You are the house of God. You should have the lamb's blood as a sign for death to keep moving past you. When the Lord returns to cast judgment on the world, you better hope you have the lamb's blood on you. You were bought at a cost, and the blood that purchased you conquered death, sickness, and everything else. Say, I was bought with a cost. Make sure you're covered in the blood. What does that mean? You should be covered in blood. What is the blood? The blood is the word of God. You should be covered in the word of God. They say life is in the blood. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and what? No man comes to the Father but what? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Jesus is the word and the life. Nothing has a greater value than the blood of Jesus. You better be filled and covered with Jesus. We was in Nigeria last month. And while we was there, the exchange rate was one American dollar equal 1,200 naira. One of our dollars was 1,200 of theirs. Different nations, money have different value, supposedly based on the resources they have. But we know that ain't true. But the Lord said, the earth is mine and the fullness thereof. Who owns all the resources? When a person sacrifice, sacrifices a loved one, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. That means one person sacrifices one loved one to get what they think is heaven on earth. But what is heaven on earth when it's hell after earth? Tell your neighbor, don't sell your soul. Jesus is more valuable than that because his blood saved all of mankind, but it's man's job to accept the gift of salvation. There are 8 billion people on earth right now. Say 8 billion. See, when the devil does something, when they sacrifice, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, which means that value is nothing compared to Jesus. Jesus was valuable enough to purchase the entire world throughout the whole history. That's valuable. So do you know how valuable you are? Many of us are walking around not understanding who we are, but not even understanding how valuable you are. You are valuable to God. So valuable, it says he gave his only begotten son. That means he thought so much of you, he said, hey, I'm going to buy them. With, redeem them back to me. See, redeem, to be redeemed, if you take a ticket in to be redeemed, what? You get something, right? I mean, you were redeemed by the blood of the Lord. He thought so much of you, he said, uh-uh. I'm going to redeem them. But at the same time, he gave you a choice. See, most people, when they walk with the devil, it's a dictatorship. You got to do what he say or else. God give you a choice. I tell you all the time, every morning you wake up with a choice. People say, Oh, God is so loving. 
he won't send nobody to hell. God don't send nobody to hell. You choose to go. You choose to be disobedient. You choose to go everything against everything his words say, and then you put all the blame on him like it's his fault. When you wake up with the choice, you going through a hard time, oh, you blaming God. But you never reflect on your own life. Then you get jealous of others and they win in season. Don't you know you got a winning season coming too? But it's all on the choices you make. Tell your neighbor, make better decisions. When you're born again, you not only get a new DNA, you get a new blood. Jesus come to live in your heart. Your heart pumps a new blood. Say a new blood. You were bought at a cost. Tell your neighbor, I belong to Jesus. Hebrews 13.5, Hebrews 13.5 read, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In other words, don't sell your soul for material things. Be happy with what you have. Ephesians 1 7. Ephesians 1 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Leviticus 17 11. Leviticus 17 11 reads, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I, and I give it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. You were bought with a cost. Say, I belong to Jesus. So we learn the blood speaks, the blood saves, but also blood is a weapon. Turn to Revelation chapter 12. And I want us to look at this one together. Revelations chapter 12, and we're going to see blood is also a weapon. Say amen when you get there. Revelations chapter 12, and starting at verse 10, it says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. And the next line is very important. It says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows what? Oh, so the devil know his time is coming to an end. See, the devil want to trick you into going to hell with him. He know he going to lose. So he's trying to convince you to settle for now. Get what you're going to get now because it's over. But he telling you his future, not yours. His future is over. He's trying to convince you God's not real. He's trying to convince you ain't no hell. He's trying to convince you about everything that go against what was written. Why? He creates confusion to get disbelief out of you. So what? Because if ain't no hell, then I can go out there and live how I want to. You don't got to go to church. You don't got to believe in Christ. You can live how you want to live. You can do whatever you want to do. It's going to be all right. Newsflash, it ain't going to be all right. You're going to be cast into hell with them. But luckily for you, say, I was bought at a cost. You were bought with blood. Blood saves. 
Blood heals and blood exempts you from death, what they call hell. When others are being attacked and judged and thrown into hell, guess what? You are removed from judgment of the world because you have accepted the blood of the Savior. Say, the blood fights for me. Let the blood be on your temple post. Engage in the word. Cover yourself in the word. Walk around with your head held high because you are on your way to heaven. Nothing can stop you but you. The choices you make. The decisions. The people you hang with. Why I say that? People are bad influences. You be around people and do stuff you know you ain't supposed to be doing. Why? Because you don't want to look like the eyeball. You don't want to be the one to say, why, why, you, why you ain't drinking? Why you ain't smoking? Why you ain't fornicating? Why you ain't doing all these sins? Because you have to tell them, I was redeemed by the blood. But when you redeem, you believe. I use this example all the time. You have faith in that chair before you sit in it. You know why? You don't test it before you sit in it. You just sit down. You should have that same amount of faith in God. You should sit down in his word. You should know that he loves you. And he sent something valuable to purchase you back, which means Thank you.